Discord going here before you start. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to speak and uh, together such a distance, um, gathering our thoughts and minds and sharing words and guidance that you have uh, presented. Your word, uh, we strive to learn. <clears throat> how and what you want us to feel and how we can speak with you and uh, your sake. Uh, Lord, uh, a more wonderful day and start. Let's begin with this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to finish Psalm 18. Uh, it's the second royal psalm of the Psalms written by King David. Uh, it's a psalm of thanksgiving, uh, as David was being attacked from two sides, from the Philistines and from Saul, King Saul. And uh, it's written as a thanksgiving, and it's written in a way that the future kings would also sing the song officially. So it's an official song of thanksgiving for um, kings who uh, receive victories to give glory to Yahweh, to give glory to God. Um, and so David begins by um thanking God for bringing him victory. Um, I, the phrase, I love you, Lord, that the father's love begins with that. He had a very strong relationship with God and God delight, delighted in David. And so we had that great Yahweh to the rescue scene uh, where God comes in. And uh, the reason is because he delights in David. Why does he delight in David? Because he has that relationship we saw uh, last week in verses 20 to 30. Um, when we have a, uh, a right relationship, that's the word righteousness in the Hebrew there, not, not sinless perfection, but a right relationship with God, our sins are covered. Um, then God can, will come to our rescue. Uh, and he delights in us when we have that relationship uh, with him. And so now we come to the end here. Um, and we have the, uh, the actual song of victory. Uh, again, very creative, very visual. David draws us right into the song. Uh, and then he ends uh, the last uh, few verses with uh, a song of praise, a song of victory and a song of praise. Um, before I start going down the verses that uh, I'm not going to read all the verses, but uh, uh, the verse that had an impact on me, I'll open up for anybody who wants to share uh, any of your thoughts as you finish this great psalm. Um, for me, this is, uh, this is an emotional time of year for me. Um, this is uh, about the time that, um, well, May 25th is when I lost my son. Um, he was, uh, stillborn. Um, but what these verses reminded me of is, uh, well, I'll just say that I've been struggling because of the temperature. Sometimes the breeze will just bring me back to some of those struggles. And, um, what these verses reminded me of is how God delivered me from, um, the lifestyle that I was in that allowed me to be pregnant. Um, I had a lot of very bad habits um, that I was turning to to fill uh, pain prior to being pregnant and afterwards. Um, I was in a very dark place. And these verses just reminded me about how God came into my life and struck down all of the enemies, or in this case, the enemy and the, the demons that I was battling as far as addiction, um, uh, mental health issues, um, personal feelings about myself. Um, and so just in a very powerful way, because this imagery is very powerful, it just was kind of a reminder of, um, I brought, I slayed everything in your life and brought you 
to a place where you are strong and you are powerful um, through me. And so um, that's, that's just what these verses reminded me of as I read it this morning, um, that God has delivered me from amazing pain. Um, and he has, you know, like we've said, um, the good life doesn't keep us pain free. I still have um, problems once in a while, but God has delivered me from the life where I was dwelling in it. And um, so I can rely on him in these moments where, where things happen and I, I start to feel sad again. I'm reminded that he has delivered me from, honestly, I would describe it as hell on earth to um, a place where I now have a purpose and I'm getting to live that purpose out every day here in Ushkarab. Um, so anyway, it was a, a emotional, but in a very good way, um, reminder. Okay. Did you get a chance to read it, Stuart? I was gonna ask you, uh, are the verses starting at verse 30? Well, you said 30 was the last. 31 to the end, yeah. 31 to the okay. So I was uh, trying to catch up. I, I I focused on the part I think that Jennifer was talking about. I could say that um, that area, the verses from 31 to are relevant uh, in a sense from uh, battling back from the Great Recession of 2008, which um, the rushing low, probably due to my focus in life being more uh, from God, turn towards God. Um, however, that recession helped me uh, or avenue but to turn to God, trusting and turning towards God um, one step at a time divulged um, one victory after another in uh, overcoming a lot of systematic um, challenges, enemies, problems, um, to finding the right path and staying on it as far as um, being on it, it has been it has been probably the most uh, amazing, thrilling, similar, probably um, experience that probably David is explaining in this particular psalm. I praise God uh, every single day. Um, therefore, I think that. That's the beauty of the songs. It, it, when you read it, it's written so well, it just brings your own life right into it. I mean, you just, you're, you're the story. Uh, yes. that David is singing about, and uh, that's what's so beautiful about this psalm. Um, Yahweh comes to the rescue. The enemy is defeated. This is the song of victory, and I, I, I think it's, it's beautiful that David doesn't take credit for his victory. Uh, you don't see much I. There's a little bit in there, but you don't see much I. Um, it starts right out of verse 31. For who is God? besides Yahweh, and who is the rock except our God? All glory for his victory goes to Yahweh, and it's the same in our lives. Whenever we have victories in life, we, you know, we, we need to remember that uh, you know, we had a very small part. <laughs> we do have a part in our victories. Um, I mean, if we sit around and do nothing, then we're probably going to experience victories, but God comes alongside of us and makes our feeble attempts um, successful. Um, verse 32, it is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. Verse 33, he makes my feet um, like the feet of a deer. I love the similes in here as well, a lot of similes. And I, I stopped at that one for a while because I, I, I what is David trying to say there? I don't, I don't know, I didn't look up Google or anything like that to, or any Hebrew scholars to see what, why did David say he makes my feet 
like the feet of a deer, but I just myself thought about all those, you know, Animal Planet uh, specials I've watched over the years. And the deers, you know, they can hear danger coming. They whoop, and the head comes up and they look around. And uh, just, you know, they're very alert. So God is, I, I, when I think what David is saying is God is, God makes me alert. I know about the dangers around me. I'm still enjoying life. I'm still eating in the pasture, but I'm listening. I'm alert. And if I need to run, I can run. <laughs> you know, a deer can, can get out of there pretty fast. Um, he causes me to stand on the height. He causes me to stand on the heights. Verse 34, he trains my hand. Verse 35, you make uh, your he saving help my shield, and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. Verse 36, you provide a broad path for my feet. And I get, and I, I can appreciate this because when I was doing that seven hour hike, um, the worst parts are the rocky paths because <laughs> your feet keep hitting those rocks and their ankles turn and twist. Um, but when you have a nice flat dirt road, you know, our ankles don't give away. I, I, I understand that. And so, you know, he, 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 yes, it's difficult, but he removes the stones and makes it smooth so we can walk it if we need to. Um, verse 37 and 38, there's the human responsibility. I pursued my enemies. I did not turn back. I crushed them so they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. So he remained faithful to the call that God had given him. But right back, verse 39, you armed me. You humbled my adversaries. You made my enemies turn their backs in flight. But I destroyed my foes. <laughs> um, and so we see uh, David although taking personal responsibility, uh, and, uh, but he also gives God credit for preparing him and, and giving him the victory. And it was a total victory. Verse 42, I beat them as fine as windblown dust. I trampled them like mud in the streets. Um, it's a complete victory that God gives us. And then the psalm ends with uh, a couple verses of praise. And I'm just going to look at verse 46. Yahweh lives. I love that. Yahweh lives. Our God's not dead. Our God is not silent. Yahweh lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be the God of my salvation. Um, Yahweh is not like the other gods. They don't live. <laughs> They don't save. Yahweh is different. He is the living God. And it's just a beautiful way to end the psalm in those words of praise. Any other thoughts before Jenny closes us in prayer? Yeah, just a quick one. Um, I originally read this in the NIV. So I too stopped and kind of thought about the, the deer imagery. And originally what um, had come to me was like agility, yeah. uh, the ability to, to move and dodge. And um, the NLT uses the word sure-footed, which I think kind of backs up my, my thought about that. So um, it just, mm -hmm. he, he makes, especially in, in battle, you need to be able to uh, dodge and such. Um, but, uh, and know where you're going, be sure of your footing. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, that was just a, I just wanted to comment on that. All right. Well, Jenny, close us in prayer and, uh, tomorrow we will jump into Psalm 19. Lord, I just thank you for the ability to come together, uh, to read your word, to, um, meditate upon it and um i love how how your word is is living and so it applies not only to the history and david but um allows us to to take it into our own lives and see uh how you what you have done and and what you will do i just praise you for the battles that you have allowed us to overcome in our lives um, I, uh, I praise you for the battles that you will defeat for us in the future. 
And I just pray if, um, if anyone um, on our team or, or watching these are going through battles now, Lord, that you would just use this psalm to remind them of your strength and your power and your um, willingness to do battle for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right.